Fabayil. We had, says, you know, the Moravians were people, as we studied Wednesday night, the Moravians were a people that had first been led to Christ by John Huss. And John Huss was a man that, uh, in the, I believe in the 1400s, and he had begun to teach, passionately teach and share. And John Huss was killed. Actually, he was killed by the Catholic leadership who tried to stop him from his uh, missionary work. And he made a prediction as he was burned at the stake. He said, the, the seed of my death is going to sprout up into a revival. One day. A hundred years later, another man came along named John Cominius. And he took the prophecy or the prediction of John Huss and he, and he reminded the Moravian Christians who, who John Huss had led the Moravians close to Czechoslovakia to believe in Jesus. And, and John Comenius reminded them of this prediction of John Huss. And he wrote it down. He said, John Huss predicted a hundred years ago that his death would be a seed that would bring revival. And John Comenius died. And 200 years later, the Moravians were still being harassed and intimidated and persecuted because of their faith. And they ended up running. And they went to a place in the Switzerland where there was a man named Ludwig von Zinzendorf, who was a Lutheran. But he received him onto his ranch and plantation. 300 refugees he received to show the love of Christ. He saw they were being persecuted, received them in. And, and he was himself a minister and they began to study the word of God together and he began to teach them and they made a covenant together. A covenant of love. That though they were from different, different doctrines, different religious perspectives, but believing in Jesus, believing in the word of God, they began to study and they made a covenant of love together. And they, and they actually it was on my wife's birthday, May 12th. 1787, they made a covenant of love with 42 articles of promise to love one another in Christ. And as after they made that covenant of love and signed it on May 12, 1787, then they be prepared to have the Lord's Supper. And they said, let's make sure our hearts are right with one another. And as they began to prepare to have the Lord's Supper, their hearts were broken. And uh, Ludwig von Zinzendorf, he found this prediction written 200 years before, that John Huss had predicted 100 years before that, 300 years before that, that it predicted that his death would become a seed. And he began to weep and to cry. And they made a plan to have a prayer meeting, to select a place to pray. And they said, we're going we're gonna to pray. We're going to pray for 24 hours a day. And they, they said, we're going to have two or three people in this place of prayer to pray. Every day. Every hour. For 24 hours they pray. They had two or three people in this one place praying for 24 hours. And they began a prayer meeting that lasted 110 years. And when we pray, God will work to mold our hearts. God will bestow grace and favor as we pray. And if you pray in my name, and they prayed and they mold, until their hearts were molded to God's name. And they began committed to missions. And one of them became burdened for the slaves in the West Indies. And they said, we will go, sell ourselves to be a slave. As they prayed, God caused their heart to fall in love with missions. And some of this mission team of Moravians was on a boat with John Wesley, who was a, was a missionary. Who, uh, John Wesley, who founded the Methodist Church and began... But he was, John Wesley was on a boat with some of the Moravians and the boat faced such a storm at the sea that there was tremendous concern that they would all die. And he was struck. He was shocked. John Wesley was shocked to see the joy of the Moravians in the midst of the storm. 
And he began to fear in his own heart that he wasn't really saved. He began to fear in his own heart that he didn't really have a personal relationship with Jesus like they did. He didn't have the hope that when they, this boat sank that he was going to go to heaven. He didn't know. And he came under such deep conviction. He said, I want what they have. And he came to, the, to this, this point to where he said, I want to accept Christ in a new way, in a personal way. I want to know God like they know God. And then he, he came, to, came to America and planted 2,000 Methodist churches in America. John Wesley. And the man that became a missionary in India that the Baptists looked to as the father of modern missions. His name was William Carey. And William Carey was supported by Luther Rice. And William Carey went to India. And he is famous because he started an organization to support mission work that is ongoing, connected to ongoing today. But William Carey got his burden for foreign missions and for reaching the world from the Moravians. And so the, so the effect of the Moravians' prayer meeting goes on today. And one thing I want to say, you know, say, God, whatever you want to do in our church, Lord. I want to say I want this church to be a praying church. Amen? Amen. If we'll pray, God will answer. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, I'll do whatever you ask in my name. And the question is, will we come to Him in His name? Say, it's not just Lord. I want a, I want a better life. I want a bigger house. I want a better car. Lord. How will you use us for your glory? What is it? What is it? When your heart gets fully set, I say, Lord, this is your glory. They say, Lord, whatever you want. You want to be a praying church. You be 